Hey Mike, we have even more questions from our Facebook page. This question is from uh, Al Rodriguez, and it's a two-part question. And so, why is Bigfoot everywhere, and why, if it's not proven yet, do folks theorize so much about Bigfoot? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, my answer to that would be, uh, well, Bigfoot isn't everywhere, but uh, w what I think you're saying there is that, boy, Bigfoot seems to be in a lot of places that, that we didn't know about previously. Uh, people were talking about Bigfoot being in the Pacific Northwest for hundreds of years, but you didn't hear a lot of talk about them in Ohio or Texas or these places, where now they're 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 talked about uh, as, as commonplace, and apparently are are just as viable habitats for Bigfoot as as the Pacific Northwest. Well, I think it's it can be answered pretty simply, and that is, the Bigfoot, in my opinion, are the closest, and I'm talking about the Sasquatch of North America. I'm not talking about the Yeti, I'm not talking about the Yeren, I'm not talking about the Orang Pendak, I'm not talking about the Din, the, the Duende, uh, the, the various other uh, manifestations of hairy biped on the planet that people talk about. I'm talking about the Sasquatch, the North American Sasquatch, the one that uh, you see in the Patterson-Gimlin film. I believe that that's our closest relative. I think they're closer to us than uh, than the bonobos are, the pygmy chimpanzees. Uh, and, and so, this being the case, they're smart, uh, they, they're self-aware, uh, they have intelligence, and what is the uh, only other animal besides the Sasquatch that you see everywhere? Humans. It's that simple. I believe the Bigfoot are close enough to humans that they're going to be just like us in so many ways, and that includes uh, ubiquitousness. <laughs> and humans have an ability to adapt to all the different environments on the planet, unlike uh, most other species that tend to stay in certain areas only. What was the other question? Uh, the second part was, uh, why, if it's not proven yet, do folks uh, spend so much time theorizing about Bigfoot? Well, theorizing... Uh, uh, you know, if you don't have one t sitting there that you can talk to and question and watch, then all you've got is theorizing. So if we're going to talk about Bigfoot at all, it has to be in theory. Uh, because until, until one is made available and that, that we can, like I say, that we can see uh, and we can film uh, and prove how it acts, uh, we're going to have to deal with theories. And because Bigfoot is largely an anecdotal phenomena, uh, in other words, uh, what we know about Bigfoot, we have, we have drawn from anecdotes, from people's descriptions of how they acted when they interfaced. And uh, people will, uh, I've had, heard other people point this out, but I want to mention, uh, these anecdotes uh, are pretty much all we have to go by. That plus common sense. Now, once you've done some field work and you've done some studies of sighting reports and you see where they tend to be, how they're associated with geography and the time of year and this sort of thing, it starts to become kind of logical. And then you can start applying basic logic if you think of them also as being sentient. And if they're sentient, or at least as self-aware of themselves and their relationship to other animals as we are, well, it's not, it's not that big a problem to figure out uh, some of the things that they might be doing. So what we do is we read uh, and we and we interview people and we get as many of these anecdotes as possible and people uh, who are d deeply involved in this read every one they can because every single one has another little tidbit of information which may or may not be true because there's always the you know the skeptic fas factor and there's nobody in the Bigfoot community who believes every Bigfoot story and every witness that he talks to because you find out very quickly that you can't do that but, th but they're, they're not all fools and liars so it's, it's a matter of discernment and uh, it's, uh, it's hypotheses and that's all we have to, do, to go by at this point